Come forward slash mobile claims, season and apply. The search for life in the heavens is as old as man itself, but a new study aims to go where no studies have gone before. Let's talk about this with Dr. David Whitehouse. Dr. Whitehouse is a space expert and author of the book The Alien Perspective, A New View of Humanity and the Cosmos. Good evening, Dr. Whitehouse. Good evening. So what can you tell us then about this new uh, study? Well, what it is, is that... um, there is lots of data about the universe in terms of surveys and pla- of stars' brightnesses and the, their colours and everything. And what this, this new team of astro- two team of astronomers have done is they've looked for something that's long been theorised as being something an advanced civilization would do, much more advanced than ourselves. They would need energy, and the way they would get energy is by surrounding their star and capturing stellar energy. And if you do that around a star, it gives you a particular signature that they have found on some nearby stars in these catalogues. What happens is that the star is a normal brightness but because it's surrounded by something that gets warm, it's heated up, it gives off more infrared, much more than you'd expect. And they found this signature. So it's a hypothesis, an idea that could it be that around these half dozen or so stars relatively close, there is a mega civilization, aliens far more advanced than ourselves, that are using their star's energy. It's not as outlandish as you would think actually are we looking for something that we would recognize uh, scientifically in a species that might not be using the same science as we are well in the sense that they they have to use the same science as we are in one sense that however advanced they are whatever discoveries they've made that might, you know, seem like magic to us and, you know, who knows what we would be able to do in a thousand or ten thousand years time. Their science has to be backwardly compatible with what we know because it, the, the, nobody can rewrite the basic rules of science, the basic rules of physics. We know those. No matter what we're able to develop in the future, we know that they have to obey the basics. So we understand the basics. Um, so we know what we would be looking for in terms of a civilization which wanted more and more energy to do more and more things. They'd have to get it from their star. So this is ground floor physics, if you like. Now, who knows what these civilizations could be like? Can you imagine a civilization that's old enough, that's advanced enough to surround its star with with material, with energy collectors, with living space, um, there would be it would be, you know, fantastic to imagine um, a civilization. What does it mean for a civilization, intelligent civilization, technological, to be a million years old? Yeah, we just can't imagine. No, but are we not looking for something that is so? Uh, infinitesimally unlikely to exist at the point of us looking at it to uh, create the uh, the effect around the their stars as you have described because if if an alien being was looking at our planet say a hundred years ago there would be um, intelligent life here we would have a functioning society and so on but we weren't taking uh, energy from the sun mm-hmm. only in a in the tiniest blink of an eye would a civilization use that power and then perhaps go completely extinct for one reason or another and then perhaps in another billion years come up for another blink of an eye i mean is it not a bit like looking not just for a needle in a haystack but for a needle in a haystack that only exists for a millisecond (laughs) you know you touch on you touch on a very on a very important point of philosophy about searching for life in space because Nobody else out there we find is going to be as dumb as we are because we are newbies. We are newbies. We've only been able to look out and even to send signals to the stars for a few decades. And therefore, if you look out into space, and if we do not know how many civilizations there could be out there, some people suggest many, some people suggest we could be the only one. We have to look 
to see if we can find evidence and find out. But we're unlikely to find somebody like us in the first hundred years of being able to communicate. We will naturally find those who've been around a long time and who have made a mark on the cosmos and who who are long-lived. Now, it may well be. We do not know that a civilization in general, wouldn't last very long. It might destroy itself. It might blow itself up. It might pollute itself. It might be destroyed by an exploding star. That might happen quite often, but perhaps it doesn't happen every time, and that some might survive, and that those, the survivors, will be the ones that we may find preferentially. And the interesting thing is that space is so big, and there are so many stars out there, and this recent survey of so many stars that have been catalogued, is they only found a few of these things. So it may well be that there are, the survivors are few and far between. But we've, we've been able to sort of suggest that perhaps they might be there. I mean, there are other explanations for these observations we've made, which could be, you know, surround uh, civilizations surrounding their stars to capture there, there are other physical natural explanations for them but we can't rule out aliens would it be possible that we might be looking directly at a civilization but it's so totally unlike our own that we wouldn't recognize that we're looking at life that's another good point that is an excellent point which is flummoxed searchers and philosophers and scientists for a while because we only know of one example of life that's us you know we're based around a certain pattern carbon atoms dna um the 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 amount of life and the variety of life on earth is astounding but it's all roughly the same so when we look out into space we know you know, could we look for places where life like ourselves could exist? Planets like the Earth, stars like the Sun. And we can make, we can sort of devise a strategy to look for them. But you're quite right. It may well be that life comes in many different forms that we might not even recognize or we might stumble across and then suddenly think, by, you know, good grief, that, that could be alive, that could be intelligent. Um, and not even thought of looking at the universe in that way before. That's the, that's the wonderful thing about thinking about looking for life in space. If ever we found it, you know, we're bound to be amazed and surprised. We, we might also be looking at a planet that is teeming with life, but it's not mm. where we might expect to find it. Because if an alien, sure. for instance, was looking at this planet, they might expect an advanced civilization to be inhabiting the the part of the globe that is covering most of it, which is which is water. But that's not where the intelligent, well, most of the intelligent life is here. Well, that's right. I mean, it's often been thought about is that because there's um. There's a whole group of planets, we believe, which are ocean planets, which have uh, no land at all. And yet the ocean is warm. It would, um, it would make it, you know, life could exist in their oceans. Could you get a technological civilization that could build machines, telescopes, rockets, spaceships from something that lived in the ocean, from a liquid environment? We don't know. We really don't know. I mean, we've, we only developed our species, our technology, our civilization, you know, in the air, on the ground. Is that a pattern or does it always have to be that way? We, we just don't know. I mean, I've got a feeling, you know, there's that, um, there's that quote from Jurassic Park where the dinosaurs were breeding in ways they hadn't realized. And somebody says, life finds a way. Yeah. It may well be that when we spread that feeling out onto the canvas of the cosmos, life will find a way in places and by means we haven't even imagined yet. Now, there's been a lot of talk about UFOs lately and uh, a lot of declassification of uh, American files on, um, I don't think they call them UFOs anymore, do they? It's just some other acronym. UAPs, right. Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. Yes. Now, there's lots of exciting videos that have been taken from uh, military planes of little dots zipping about and doing uh, extraordinary things. What, what do you make of all that? 
Well, I'm afraid to say there's nothing anomalous with those. Um, I would love to believe we're being visited by aliens and that the search has come to us. I think the make the universe a fantastic place, but you've got to be tough-minded. You've got to say it's an extraordinary claim that we are being visited by extraordinary, remarkable spacecraft from a, another civilization – what is the evidence that they are here? And those, those videos from the pilots, which caused quite a bit of fuss for several years, are indeed fascinating. But they have now, after some study, after understanding the cameras they were taken from, um, they've now got reasonable explanations in terms of um, normal things seen in unusual circumstances. So until you find something that has no reasonable interpretation or explanation you have to take the reasonable way out and say it's not a spaceship but um i would maintain and the thing is we've had ufos and flying saucers claimed for for decades and decades and yet at the moment there has never been more camera cameras on our planet we've all got them on our phones there are three billion cameras on the, uh, we've never surveilled our planet better. A million people are up in the air at any one time, and some of those have got cameras and window seats. And yet, please give me one, just one in-focus, close-up <laughs> picture of an extraordinary spacecraft. You can't find it. No. So either there's something weird going on, or this is a, a mythology, it's a psychology that comes from within ourselves. What do you think of the, 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 the sense of actually looking at all? Because we are an intelligent and moderately civilized being, but we are quite a belligerent species. And oh. you mentioned Jurassic Park and the other phrase that, uh, the other, uh, quote that catches my eye from that is at first it's all ooh and ah, and then comes the running and the screaming. If we, <laughs> if we found alien life, would we be safe from them and would they be safe from us? That, that is the big question, which seems to be growing bigger among the scientific community. Uh, because, we like to think that, you know, we're an aggressive, nasty species, even to ourselves. Um, we like to think that if we found aliens in space, they would be princes of peace, that they would bring us cosmic wisdom and understanding. They might not. They might be just nasty pieces of work like ourselves, but rich, writ large on a cosmic scale. And there's this phrase which comes to mind is that, it takes two to be friends, but only one to make war. And it's a serious question as to whether or not we would want to find what's out there. Uh, because we cannot assume that they would be friendly. Dare we take the risk that they would be nice and friendly and help us along?